understanding and reducing belly fat. In this video, I'm going to help empower you with a greater understanding of belly fat, what it is, where it comes from, and why it's so dangerous. You will learn what causes this fat and why it's not just the food you eat that promotes it. Actually, you'll learn more than just how to reduce belly fat. You'll become more empowered and in control of your life. And it may be much simpler than you think. Let's take a look at some of the top questions about belly fat, where it comes from, why it forms on our belly, and most importantly, how do we get rid of it? Some of the top questions about belly fat we can address first. And the number one, what is belly fat? It's the fat that forms around our bellies. But there's more. Specifically, it forms deep inside of our bodies, around our internal organs and our intestines. Thus, it's also called visceral fat. You have to understand that most fat sits on our bodies, whereas belly fat, it sits deep within our body. Thus, it's called visceral fat. So it changes our body shape to what is described as an apple shape where we're more or less rounded versus when we have just fat on our hips which is more pear shaped. Fat can sit on our body as this diagram shows on our hips. Fat can sit in our body. Again, the arrows show how it forms around our internal organs or outside on our body or again inside around our organs and so on. And how is it different from other fat? Fat is very readily stored here and evolutionary this has been a great process and part of a survival mechanism the human body has developed. Now this fat's different because it produces hormones which can disrupt insulin's action and this can make you store more fat. Belly fat produces its own cortisol as well as 25 other compounds and half of these compounds promote inflammation. And it's linked to the big killers and other dis-eases. So belly fat is in us and it contains the greatest number of cortisol receptors. Those are the stress receptors. Thus, belly fat is created and stored more readily in the deep abdominal area when one is stressed. And ins insulin isn't so innocent. Insulin is the hormone involved in blood sugar regulation and it helps keep our energy levels stable and under control. However, insulin is a powerful storage hormone. It tells the body to store energy in the muscles and in the fat tissue for later use. And it strongly promotes belly fat. How's your sleep? If you lose sleep, this can promote the body to gain fat. Lack of sleep not only makes us tired and reduces our willpower, it also promotes belly fat in both men and women. Some of the lifestyle factors that are connected to belly fat, stress, sleep, blood sugar and insulin, and isn't it interesting that if you have sleep problems, that increases the stress on the body and the stress hormones again. That promotes the promotion of belly fat. If you're stressed, that can disrupt blood sugar and insulin management. And insulin is a storage hormone and it promotes belly fat. And it goes the other way as well. If you can't control your blood sugar, if you skip meals, if you don't eat the right types of foods, that will actually increase the stress hormone in your body. And by the way, if you can't sleep, 
that affects blood sugar and insulin management and it goes the other way as well insulin management also affects how well you sleep if you are controlling your blood sugar that may wake you up or not allow the body to get the true restful healing sleep that it needs and movement and exercise are very important in this equation as well so some of the contributors to belly fat storage sleep quality stress and cortisol blood sugar and insulin your food quality and the quantity of the food you eat and your muscle dynamics and movement and there's also inflammation and toxicity so why is belly fat so dangerous it produces hormones that create inflammation in the body it contributes to inflammatory problems and because it's located right around all the organs those inflammatory compounds can be released into the bloodstream into those organs and create problems within them obesity leads to a chronic low-grade inflammatory state that is being linked to the development of insulin resistance diabetes and other inflammatory conditions such as osteoarthritis, asthma, allergy, autoimmune problems, and inflammation is associated with many of the big killers. Cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, cancer, heart disease. And it's considered the most deadliest fat because it shortens our lifespan. What does some of the new research on belly fat state? It shows belly fat is linked to dementia, cognitive impairment, type 2 diabetes, and Alzheimer's disease. And by the way, if you haven't heard it, Alzheimer's disease is now being called type 3 diabetes. And belly fat is related to sleep apnea, a very dangerous condition. And it's worse for men and menopausal women. And sadly, more and more children are accumulating belly fat as well. And this, as you know, is a very sad state of our nation's health. A very popular question is, does overeating cause belly fat? You would think it would, and the answer truly is yes and no. Overeating causes fat accumulation everywhere on the body so yes it may contribute to some belly fat however overeating doesn't specifically cause belly fat accumulation however the quality of the food you eat may eating the high glycemic foods these are the foods that spike your blood sugar and insulin may and remember that important connection between blood sugar and insulin and cortisol and belly fat has more cortisol receptors so when cortisol levels rise the body will store more belly fat and insulin also tells those cells get busy and lay down more fat so what is the lifestyle belly fat connection just to summarize stress and the hormone cortisol toxicity poor sleep blood sugar issues, inflammation, depression, and poor nutrition all contribute to the apple shape, the belly fat. And belly fat is related to heart disease, type 2 diabetes, cancers, Alzheimer's disease, accelerated aging, a shorter lifespan, hormone issues, sleep problems, and most of these are inflammatory related issues. Truly, it's a fattening combination. It all adds up to a slower metabolism and fat storage. Chronic stress can affect our thyroid function and directly affect thyroid hormone production and activation. It causes the loss of muscle and that's where we burn fat. It alters our brain function and reduces serotonin and that can contribute to de depression. Chronic stress can elevate insulin. Again, that's fat storage and chronic stress contributes to poor sleep. It affects our mood and our willpower. And when we're chronically stressed, 
it reduces our energy, we don't move as much, and ultimately, this all adds up and contributes to belly fat storage. So some of the core concepts on belly fat. Stress and the hormone cortisol, insulin and poor sleep are the big three that contribute to increased belly fat. Overeating and lack of movement also play a role as well. Belly fat forms deep inside around our organs. It's in us. Belly fat produces inflammation and stress hormones, which contribute to most diseases like diabetes, cardiovascular disease, heart disease, strokes, cancer, and so on. And belly fat is related to other diseases such as fatigue, low energy, Alzheimer's, dementia, sleep apnea, hormone imbalances, infertility, accelerated aging, and reduced lifespan. Some other core concepts on belly fat. We looked at this intricate connection between stress, sleep, blood sugar and insulin, and exercise and movement. We saw that belly fat sits in us, not on us. Belly fat's related to the other diseases such as fatigue, low energy, and so on. And it reduces our lifespan. It contributes to inflammatory problems such as joint problems and cardiovascular disease. Some other core concepts on belly fat, it's most prominent in men, and women though are catching up, and unfortunately, many children are developing belly fat as well. Belly fat's related to depression and low mood, and it's the most dangerous type of fat. Belly fat is a symptom that your physiology is out of balance, and it has been for quite a while. And your lifestyle is most likely the main contributor to it. So how do I get rid of it now? I want to show you the simplest, most straightforward, new techniques, new strategies, with no gimmicks all scientifically supported to make you fitter, leaner, more energetic, and to get you results. As a matter of fact, we want to give you lifelong results. So go watch the next video now with the solutions.